My name is Carol Semrad. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Chicago, and I'm here with Dr. Hironori Yamamoto, who is a professor and chairman in the Department of Medicine at Gigi Medical Center in Japan. He's also the director of the endoscopy and GI units in the hospital there. And I'm here because Dr. Yamamoto has uh, invented the double balloon entroscope that has revolutionized the treatment of small bowel disease. And in 2015, he received the ASGE International Service Award for his accomplishment. And he trained me in deep enteroscopy. <laughs> so I am an admirer and a friend. Um, and Dr. Yamamoto just told me that his name means hero, means intelligence, and nori means a calm manner. And I can say he was named well oh, thank you by very. his parents. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start by asking you, Hiro, how did you get started in terms of your interest in medicine? Just briefly, what made you decide to be a doctor? Oh, OK. Uh, before that, I want to uh, thank ASG. I'm very honored to be selected as one of the masters, and that's very great. And OK, to your question, uh, I started medicine because um, that was uh, when I was a high school student. And, uh, and when I select the college and university and what do I do in the future, and I thought, I want to do something uh, that is meaningful to me, and I want to do something what, what I can understand mm -hmm. what I am doing. And uh, medicine is very straightforward. <laughs> we can help patients, and uh, whatever area uh, we do uh, our best, then uh, people appreciate it. That's a reason. <laughs> Good. And what made you decide to come to the United States to do your training in gastroenterology? Oh, that's a good question. And my university, my medical school uh, was a bit uh, special medical school. Uh, that means I didn't ne need to pay any um, um, uh, tuitions. Mm -hmm. uh, it was free, but uh, because of that, I had to fulfill duty. I had to go back to my own prefecture, and I worked as a general practitioner mm -hmm. for about uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I didn't uh, get um, very organized training as a doctor or endoscopist. And so uh, I want to be trained again. And, uh, and the training system in the United States is uh, very established, organized training. So I, I wanted to undergo the training. So that's the reason why I came to the United States. I took the ECFMG mm -hmm. certification, and I entered the residency. Yeah. Good. And then let's get on to the development of the double balloon endoscope. So what drove you? What made you say, I have to develop this and really keep pushing to develop that new technology? Because as you know, up to that point, we had upper and lower endoscopy. I worked in the small bowel my entire early career. And one thing that was frustrating to mm -hmm. me was the inability to visualize, sample, and get at small bowel mm -hmm. disease. So what made you say, enough is enough, I'm going to change this? OK. Uh, that is um, uh, not uh, like that. Um, that's just a coincidental, uh, because I was not doing enteroscopy at all um, for about 10 years after graduation, mm -hmm. because I was working as a general practitioner. And what I was doing is just diagnostic endoscopy okay. and colonoscopy. So the, after I went back to my medical school, medical uh, university hospital, mm -hmm. then that's the first time I saw the enteroscopy procedure. Mm -hmm. And that was very shocking to me. 
the push enteroscopy was inserted to a patient who, who was a relatively young lady who had um, bleeding, mm -hmm. OGIB. And um, the, the endoscopist uh, the performed enteroscopy tried to push in the endoscope deeper and deeper, but it didn't work. <laughs> yes. So I thought that uh, that's a very strange procedure and uh, not very efficient at all. Mm -hmm. And old fashion, I yes. thought. And something, something better uh, we should make. Okay. That, uh, that's the reason. <laughs> and then, so you developed this device. And part of it is going forward, getting the backing. And the other part is, when did you really think that it was ready to go out into the general GI use, where you said, this is going to work? What uh -huh. was that moment where you, did you have some champagne, or what did you do? <laughs> did you say, this is the moment, and out it went, or how did that come about? Oh, uh, when I saw the, that procedure, I, the, the, my, the, the, my, the way of my thinking was, uh, why did it, why uh, did the push enteroscopy, uh, why the push enteroscopy didn't work? Right. And... Uh, and then I found out that uh, even if you try to push the endoscope deep, the shaft of the endoscope stretch the small intestine mm -hmm. and make the next curve uh, more acute. Right. That's the problem. So what I, what I tried to do was the prevention of the stretching of the small mm -hmm. intestine. So in order to prevent the uh, stretching of the small intestine, and the idea of an uh, overture with a balloon to grip the small intestine to prevent the uh, stretching of the in intestine. Mm -hmm. And that idea came up to my mind. And in my mind, it worked very well already. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I the, that idea, with that idea, um, I tried to convince the endoscopy companies, but uh, they didn't believe my idea yeah. at all. <laughs> so what I did was I made the prototype myself, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually performed the double balloon system, uh, the, yeah. and it worked. Yeah. Then, um, then I started doing that with handmade double balloon endoscopes and with some several cases. The, and I could prove that uh, that principle uh, actually works. Then I started working with the company, okay. with the company and the, the, the commercially available product uh, mm -hmm. was developed. And let me ask you about how you put this out into the GI community, because as uh, Andrea Mai, who trained most of the US uh, deep enteroscopists, Mm -hmm. um, is a woman, mm -hmm. and you chose first to put it out into Europe, or maybe that wasn't a choice of yours. But how did, was it that you had Andrea Mai be sort of your second in almost the, between you and Dr. Mai, you trained mm -hmm. essentially everyone in Asia and Europe and the United States. How did that come about? Oh, that is, uh, again, an uh, incidental meeting. And the... Uh, the first performance of double balloon enteroscopy was in Canada, uh, outside of Japan. At that time, uh, the, the double balloon system was not commercially available yet, but the prototype, I brought the prototype to Dr. Markon's course and mm -hmm. showed the, I showed the procedure. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody was so amazed. And, uh, European faculties are very interested in, and the, the, that time I was working with Fujifilm company already, and uh, your, Fujifilm Europe asked me to um, do a demonstration uh, in the hospital of uh, Andrea May. Yeah. And then I performed the procedure in her hospital in 
and this burden, and together with uh, Professor L. And she was very interested in the procedure, and she, she wanted to uh, start the procedure, and uh, Fujifilm helped her to do the procedure. And then um, their group published the first double balloon um, paper, and uh, we worked together to, there, yes, that's the story. Good. Okay, uh, let me go on to, before we talk about what's needed, because there's not that much time left. Um, so at this point, how does it feel to have literally brought sort of disruptive technology that is being used and now not only embraced, but more and more people are doing it and accepting it, and it's completely worked. Mm -hmm. so as you know, not all technologies make it. They start up, and then people say, no, this isn't really good. We're not mm -hmm. going to use it anymore. So that was how it was when you first invented the double balloon scope. A lot in the US said, I don't know. This seems like it's long. I don't know. So how do you feel? Do you feel sort of? Yeah, uh, actually, I myself uh, was rather surprised uh, <laughs> <laughs> that because I thought it will work, but uh, it's a cumbersome procedure uh -huh. and takes time. So uh, I will do it, but uh, I, I'm not sure. I was not sure other people will do that. But uh, fortunately, um, the um, Western doctors, uh, like yourself, yes. <laughs> we saw great value in it. Yeah, that, that, was, that was rather surprising yeah. to me because uh, in general, in Western countries, uh, you have a, um, very, uh, you have to, you have to prove something uh, cost effective. Yes, yes but uh, that procedure is not cost effective <laughs> at not. all. So, uh, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> high, yeah, the hurdle is yes. high. So the against that hurdle, uh, the, uh, you you continued doing that for patients. That, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> well, I think Thank we you. all had to fight for it because we knew it was right for the patient. And then eventually the patient said, no, I, why don't you do this procedure? I don't want to go right to surgery. Someone should go in with that long scope. So mm. then pe patients start wanting it in the U.S. And that's how yes. it kind of takes its own life form here. Yes, I appreciate it. So tell me a bit about the future. We have a few minutes left here. Mm -hmm. What do you think, okay, what is the next step for the small ball? It's a difficult area to do therapy, and we don't have a whole lot of tools to work with. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what do you think would help move us to more advanced therapy of, say, submucosal lesions, uh, sort of the areas that are pushing the envelope mm -hmm. uh, in the other areas of the GI tract? What do you think is needed at this point to go take it a step further? Mm. in terms of therapy? Uh, I think some kind of, some kind of um, improvement uh, we can make for double balloon enteroscopy as well, but uh, um, other techniques like spiral enteroscopy could, be, uh, could, could do a better job, and we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. So the... Uh, because of the development of double balloon endoscopy, mm -hmm. now uh, everybody thinks that uh, uh, small intestine can be reached right. by uh, endoscopy. Right. And so, save surgery for people. They don't right, have to go to surgery right. anymore. So that okay. is uh, uh, right. uh, maybe more... Uh, more and more advanced techniques using uh, AI or a more automated te technology. Wow. Um, so that's a uh, future. We don't know yet, okay. but it will improve. <laughs> and what advice do you give to young people? I know you brought to our live endoscopy course mm -hmm. a very talented um, 
medical student, your most talented one, who was a woman. Mm -hmm. But in particular for women, because women sometimes it's harder for them to get the ear of companies to develop their mm -hmm. ideas. What kind of advice, what do you advise in Japan? You're the head of the Department of Medicine. You're the head of GI. Mm -hmm. How are you working to help not just women, men too, but how to get their ideas out there and develop because there's a lot of good ideas out mm -hmm. there, but how to... I'm telling them uh, they have to believe uh, themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, usually when you, um, when you come up with a new idea, uh, if that is a new idea, then nobody knows. So right. nobody believes usually. Mm -hmm. So you have to believe yourself. And, uh, and as long as you keep believing, and, uh, and then you can find out a, a solution mm -hmm. uh, which can solve the problem, which is the, uh, the, uh, the factor which makes, the, makes some procedure or something impossible. Right. But, so it's uh, drive and persistence and belief. Yes. Talking about the persistence, I think uh, <laughs> um, ladies are yeah. more persistent than men <laughs> in general. <laughs> so they should use that to their advantage because yeah, right. they have a strong persistence. Yeah, but that's they right. <laughs> should use it more. Yes. Okay. That's a good advice. I like that. <laughs> Thank you, Hiro, for joining me at the ASGE Meet the Masters talk. Thank you, Carol. I enjoyed it. I look forward to working with you in the future. Yes, thank you.